Hello, everyone, and welcome to this webinar. The topic of this webinar is the PDBE tools in GitHub. My name is Lukáš Pravda, and I work in the PDBE as a bioinformatician. This is already the fifth webinar in a series of six, and we are going to finish this series of webinar next week by a presentation of my colleague, Mandara, who is going to give you an overview of the data visualization tools we are using at the PDBE. Sadly, the last webinar is full, but you are still free to join the waiting list in the case there are any vacancies. In this webinar, I'm going to give you a brief of overview of who we are and how we relate to the WWPDB organization. And then I'm going to cover three different Python tools that we are using internally in our release process. Those are going to be uh, PDB SIF, which is MM SIF parser, PDB CCD utils, that is a Python toolkit for small molecule chemistry, as well as arpeggio that works for identifying molecular interactions. For those of you who are not familiar with the WWPDB or PDBE, we, PDBE, are a member of the WWPDB consortium that maintains together with our partners, that is RCSB, PDB, BMRB, and PDBJ, biomolecular archives such as Protein Data Bank. And although we are located at different sites, we make sure that the PDB archive is consistent and searchable no matter where you get the data from. Ourselves, we are located just off Cambridge in the United Kingdom at the European Bioinformatics Institute that is an outstation of a European molecular biology laboratory. And we are surrounded by a number of different research groups and service teams, such as Uniprot, Campbell, or Open Targets, that allows us to maintain a fruitful collaborations to enrich the data that are distributed by the WWPDB. One of such collaborations is a project that is called SIFTS. This is a collaboration with the Uniprot team, and SIFTS stands for Structure Integration with Function, Taxonomy, and Sequence. And it allows us to map Uniprot sequences on the top of PDB entries, as well as map other sequence databases such as Interpro, PFAM, or CAP. Just a bit of general information before we start. All the examples I'm going to give are also going to be made available for you in a form of Jupyter Notebooks. Uh, so there's absolutely no need for you to make any snapshots of the presentation or write down any notes. Some of the packages I'm going to talk about, they have external dependencies, and those dependencies are best handled using Conda Environment Manager. The packages could be in, can be installed either from PyPy repository or directly from GitHub repository. So feel free to fork any of the repositories, contribute with your code, open any issues, ask for feature requests, or file back reports. Our, our GitHub repository contains three types of different repositories. The first one are Python packages that we are internally using in our release process. And as we are working towards making our release pro process as open source as possible, the number of available Python packages is going to increase. Another type of repository we are uh, providing through GitHub pages are training materials with different Jupyter notebooks that allows you to interactively inspect some of the services we provide. And last but not least, we provide web components that we are internally using at our PDBE service for visualization of the macromolecular data. And my colleague Mandar is going to cover those packages following week. The first package I'm going to talk about is called PDBE SIF, and it's Python MMSIF parser. 
PDB SIF is lightweight pure Python parser. There are no external dependencies for this package, but internally it uses tokenizer that was developed by company Global Phasing. It allows you um, input and output operations on the top of MMC files that are distributed by WWPDB members. There is extensive documentation available for the package, and you can install it either from PyPy or directly from the GitHub repository. Before we get into the details of the, how you can use the package, I'd like to briefly just reiterate on what the MMC file is. So MMC files was jointly developed by WWPDB Consortium and International Union of Crystallography based on the SIF format. It became master format of the PDB archive in 2014. And since this year, it's required for all the X-ray depositions. The MMC format addresses some of the PDB shortcomings such as limited number of atoms you can put into single PDB entry, as well as it greatly enhances the capability of providing metadata information that are available along with the coordinates itself. An MC file is a flexible and extensible key value format for representing macromolecular data. Here are some of the links you may find useful. The first one provides you with a detailed syntax description the second link provides you correspondence between MMC fields and those fields from older PDB format, as well as we are providing link to other MMC parsers in case you are using different programming language but Python. The MMC files are composed out of different data blocks. Each data block starts with a string data and underscore, followed by data block ID. Inside of the data, those data blocks, you can find data items organized into categories. And each of these data items contains has an attribute name. The value of those attributes can be either a string, as you can see on the example on the right hand side, as well as array of the strings, as you can see on the left-hand side. If you, there are three main ways how you can, how you can read files using PDB SIF package. All of them starts by importing SIF file reader object from PDB SIF and MSIF IO namespace. Create the instance and then apply function read on the path to the SIF file, which is located at your hard drive. By specifying parameter output, you can finally tune the data object type you will get out of this method. In the first example, we specified data object to SIF dictionary, and what you will get out of that is just a plain pipe Python dictionary with all the data from a SIF file. You can use additional optional parameters to restrict the category names that are going to be parsed out of those, out of the PDB, out of the MLC file, or just a list of categories that you want to ignore. This can be particularly useful when you are working with a large MMC files and you are not interested in a, for example, coordinate data for some reason. You can use the SIF dictionary option in case um, you don't need any further shorthand methods and it wants to, you want to modify the data by yourself freely, as well as this is the fastest option. And you can see on the right-hand side, the example of a such Python dictionary and the underlying uh, MMC file. The second option can be retrieved by changing output parameter of the read function to SIF wrapper. And in this case, you will get a dictionary that is going to be keyed on the data block ID 
and the value to the data block ID is going to be SIF wrapper. The SIF wrapper object allows you to access the data that is available in the MMC file through regular Python dot notation as well as dictionary indexes because this SIF wrapper option this SIF wrapper ob object is nothing else but a wrapper around the Python dictionary object. It also exposes convenient search functions, which allows you to comfortably search through the category items. In this particular example, we are searching through chemical components that are part of the SIF file, and we are searching only those components that contains type equals to non-polymer. And the result for this particular example, you can see on the right hand side. Regular expressions are also supported in this, in this function. Third option, how you can read in files using the PDB SIF is by specifying output equals to SIF underscore file. And you can use this option when you want to modify the content of the of the SIF file extensively through a number of different shorthand functions, which allows you to extract the data block, extract the categories out of the data block, create new categories in your data block, as well as accessing values of the data items in their formatted manner as they are available in MMC file, as well as the raw value. Last but not least, the Python allows you to write out MMC files by importing SIF file writer object from the same namespace. Just create the instance of, a, of the file that will point to location where you want your MMC file to be located and call write function with a given object. The write function takes as an argument all the objects I've mentioned that is Python dictionary, SIF wrapper object, as well as SIF file. In this particular example, we have used plain Python dictionary. And here on the right hand side, you can see resulting SIF file. The second package I'd like to talk about is called PDBE CCD utils. And it's a set of Python tools for working with the small molecules in the protein data bank. Uh, CCD utils is a package that we are internally use in our chemistry process. It depends on RDK data model and other dependencies are installed automatically. As I mentioned earlier, the best way how to work with dependencies is through Conda Environment Manager. So if you want to work with the PDB CCD utils, first we need to create RDKit environment with RDKit installed, activate the environment, and then install PDB CCD utils either from PyPy or directly from GitHub. There are two main sources of data for this package. The first is the WWPDB chemical component dictionary that contains all the ligands that are commonly found in the protein data bank. That includes all the drug molecules or cofactors, for example. Another source of the data is the WWPDB Biologically Interesting Molecule Reference Dictionary that contains all the polypeptides or oligosaccharides that can be also found in the protein data bank and are formed out of those chemical components. PDB CCD Utils API contains a lot of different modules, and I'm going to go through some of them. The entry point of the PDB CCD Utils package is located, located in the module CCD Reader that allows convenient read methods for reading SIF files and creating RDKit molecular objects. You can access the read functionality by importing CCD Reader module and calling read PDB SIF file function on the SIF file that is located in your disk drive. Alternatively, you can turn off 
the default sanitization. So the Arctic molecule will would come out without the sanitization that is done directly by Arctic. The result of this function is a CCD reader result that contains a list of warnings and errors that were encountered during the parsing of your file, as well as component that contains information from the, from the MMC file. There's also convenience method read PDB components file that works best, best with MMC files that contains multiple data blocks. In that case, you will get dictionary where key is a data block ID and the value is a CCD reader result I mentioned earlier. Another module is called component and this is the heart of the, of the PDB CCD utils package as it contains shorthand methods and enables seamless integration with RDKit. The components object contains a lot of different properties you can use in order to access metadata information that is stored in MMC file, as well as RDKit molecular objects with idealized and model conformers of the compound. Also, it creates an interface for convenient methods that you can use that are wrapping some of the RDKit functionality on, and I'm going to demonstrate that use case in a few examples. One of such shorthand functions can be used for retrieving scaffolds. So first, if you create the component and you would access the scaffolds property, you can't find anything. But if you call get scaffolds method, you will get array of scaffolds that were retrieved for, for this chemical component. And then you can access the very same property and get greater level of detail on the, on the molecule per scaffold, such as SMILES representation of the scaffold, as well as atom mapping, atom level mapping for the scaffold. Another function which can be used is for locating fragments. So we start by importing fragment library class, creating an instance. If we don't provide any parameter, the fragment library that is, that is supplied with the code is going to be used. However, you can replace it with your own fragment library. And then we simply run library search with the library, and we can see that there are two different fragments that were located in our component of interest. Interest. All of those fragments are defined by their name, their smiles representation, as well as atomic mapping on the, on the component of interest. Another useful feature is when you want to generate depictions of your compounds. So start by importing depiction manager from following namespace, create an instance of a depiction manager. This is because there is underlying code that helps you with the problematic cases because the code is provided with a number of hand curated molecular templates that allows creating collision free depictions, although in cases where RDKit would have a problem and run compute to the function with the depiction manager as the argument. You will get back the depiction result, which contains information about what template was used, as well as the depiction molecule and score for that depiction. The lower the score, the better, as that means collision-free depiction. Higher score means that there are some problems with the depiction. After you have called this function, you can then use convenient functions to export the depiction into SVG. And there are there is a number of different options you can use along with a regular depiction, such as displaying atom names, as well as providing highlight. In this particular example, I have 
creative detection of a heme molecule, where with the scaffold for heme highlights it. So at first, I extracted the scaffold, then I extracted atom mapping. I colored all the atoms that are part of the comp that are part of the scaffold uh, with the green, and extracted all the bonds bonds that can be found among those atoms. PDB-CCD also implements some of the algorithms, and one of such algorithms is a molecular similarity method that was developed by John Pizek. You can read the details of this method in, in the following paper. And if you want to use this method, just, just import compare molecules method out of the parity module, parity method module, and in this example, we can have a look what is the similarity of two variations of heme, heme A and heme B. Heme B. First, we just read the, math, read the structures as we used in the previous examples. And then we comp call compare molecules method with our two options. As a result, we are going to get atom level mapping between those two molecules as well as similarity score, which is around 60% in this particular case. Last but not least, there is also a module that allows you convenient serialization of the component into a number of different file formats. First, just import CCD writer namespace, CCD writer module out of the PDB CCD tools core namespace and then import conformer type class in order to control what is the conformer type you want to write out into your file. So in this example, or in the first example, we are going to write out idealized coordinates into SDF file. Second example allows us to write out model coordinates into SIF file. And the third example allows us to write out model coordinates without hydrogens into PDB format. And list of all the possible options this right molecule method uh, can do for you can be found in the documentation. As I mentioned earlier, we are using this package extensively in our chemistry release process. And as such, there, there is a number of scripts that are defined by the package, and we are running this process weekly to generate our chemistry data. All the data we generate are available for all the components, are available from the following FTP area, and roughly for each chemical component, you can find standard CCD file in a SIF format, as well as a number of different conformers in different file formats. We also provide a number of molecular depiction of a different resolution, as well as file with the metadata information about the component of interest. The last package I'd like to talk about today is called Arpeggio, and we use it for perceiving molecular interactions. Arpeggio was originally developed by Harry when he was a PhD student at Sir Thomas Blundell's lab at University of Cambridge. It depends on BioPython, OpenBabel, and PDB SIP. Here are some convenient links for the repository and for documentation. The best way how you can work with Arpeggio is through Conda environment. So make sure you create environment, create activate the environment and install the dependencies. This package is only available from our GitHub repository. There are some differences to the original Arpeggio. The main one is that this implementation supports Python 3. It has a modular architecture so that it's PyPy, so that it's 
if installable, and it supports MMC format. It also changes the main way how the results are given, where we have introduced JSON format with the results to support programmatic parsing of the results. Arpeggio is a tool that allows you to identify all sorts of different interactions, and there is a few different groups of such interactions. The first large group, large group is contains atom-atom interactions, where you can find covalent links as well as all sorts of different, different electrostatic interactions. Another group contains atom plane interactions, where you can identify interactions between aromatic rings and atoms. Also, Arpeggio can calculate different stacking interactions that were defined by Chakrabarti and Bhattacharya, as well as group plane and group, group interactions. Arpeggio works best with the protonated structures, and the structures we are using for this purpose can be accessed using our model service service, model server service, as well as all the interactions we calculate for PDB data can be consumed using our aggregated API. My colleague Srinath has a nice webinar about aggregated API, and I welcome you to see the video of the webinar he presented last week. And this aggregated API powers our visualization tools that we implement at our pages in order to look at the interactions. So for here on the left-hand side, you can see ProVista, that component that maps all the perceived interactions on the protein sequence that allows you to spot immediately what are, what are the biting sites. As well as we have protein ligand environment component that allows you to perceive molecular interactions for a bound molecule, as example of this oligosaccharide, as well as this drug molecule. Arpeggio exposes a single script that allows you to generate molecular interactions. It's fairly simple to use. You just need to provide molecular selection, that is a ligand or a list of ligands that you want to calculate interactions to, and protonated structure. As a result, you will get array of molecular interactions. As you can see in this example, this is an atom-atom interaction between a retinoic acid and a water molecule. And because of the distance, there is also Van der Waals clash present in this type of interaction. You can achieve the very same information by using Arpeggio API. So in this example, I'm just importing interaction complex creating interaction complex, which points to an MC file with our protonated structure. Then I need to run a few pre-flight checks. And then, given the molecular selection, we can run the Arpeggio algorithm and get the molecular contacts. So this is all, all from my side. Um, I'd like to invite you to Talk to a talk of my colleague Mandar that is going to focus on a data visualization tools we are using at the Protein Data Bank next week. You can access all the videos and all the materials that was present in this webinar series using this link. Sadly, uh, the next webinar, which is also the last webinar of this series, is full. But I'll, I would still encourage you to join the waiting list in case there is any spot free. Thank you for your attention, and I welcome any questions you may have.